Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Hey, welcome back everyone. You're watching theCUBE live in Silicon Valley. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the students from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at Wikibon. Our next guest is Donna Perlich, VP of Product and Solutions Marketing at Pentaho. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on, you guys. Big news, obviously the big announcement uh, with HDS, Hitachi Data Systems, and kind of that partnership merging, kind of, or acquisition and whatnot. Um, Hitachi is known for storage, and they got big yep. storage for the big data. Uh, we're the big data week. So what's what's going on? I mean, your world changed significantly, business as usual. Yeah. How has that announcement shaped what you guys are doing now, if any? Yeah. And what's, what's going on? Been a lot of excitement. Um, so you know, for us, it's it's great because we really have built up this big data brand over the last few years, and um, Hitachi's direction is social innovation, Internet of Things. We're really good at you know dealing with big data, machine-generated data. So we're excited for that. It's going to help us scale, and um, we also get to keep our brand, which is nice. And we're a wholly-owned subsidiary, so it's pretty much business as usual. And can't really say much more, obviously. Because it hasn't closed. Hasn't yet. closed it's kind of yet. Around yeah, the corner, but it takes some closing time. Exactly. But hasn't changed what you guys are doing. Obviously, independent. No, in fact, um, if anything, it's going to be more business as usual, just because uh, we're dealing with so many big data customers and early ones that. I think we're going to add a lot of expertise mm -hmm. in that area uh, and help help the Hitachi folks in what that What are you guys direction. expecting this week? Obviously, on, on the solution side, you're seeing much more expansion discussion around solutions, all right? Um, big data, analytics, IBM's talking about cognitive in their vision, other people talking about in memory with Spark, a lot of variety, but it, it all comes back down to customer solutions and you're seeing the open data platform as an accelerant yep. by their narrative. What does all this me mean for the marketplace, for the customer? What is the key solutions that are, that are coming forth from all this uh, growth? Yeah, well, you know, the interesting thing is it's a, definitely a sign of how much disruption has gone on and, and really how confusing it's been for the last couple of years. We had a, a lot of early customers who were looking at big data and trying to determine how to get value from it. Some early innovators like EDO Interactive, for, for instance, does, um, they do loyalty programs for the, for the credit card companies. And so we were really looking at how do they, how do they end up, um, you know, what are some of the patterns that emerge for these types of companies? And, and one of the things we realized early relative to what's been happening with the disruption now and the different technologies is they really want to figure out, first of all, how to get value from the big data and then how to sort of protect themselves from this environment, right? And, and make good decisions and be able to be flexible because this is a very changing world and there's a new technology every day. So, um, you know, our approach has definitely been one of let's figure out what our customers are doing, keep those reference architectures in mind and help them, help them really with what we've learned. Mm -hmm. So talk about Pentaho's approach. So it's kind of blending the data integration part of the equation with the business intelligence and the visualization. Talk about, at a high level, why that's important, why, why, you, why Pentaho sees that as not separate kind of workloads, but two things that need to be integrated. Yeah, well it's pretty interesting because we've always sort of had that approach mm -hmm. of you know, BI and DI better together. Uh, but I think for big data and especially in the blending, it's it's really important. So in our view, you know, in order to figure out how to have successful analytics on this side, you've got to be able to, you know, actually capture that data, mm -hmm. blend it. And one of the things that's emerged for us is this concept of I get my data into Hadoop, for instance, and the product we've announced today, Pentaho 5.3, um, how do I refine that and blend it and then deliver those data sets to the people who need them? And so in our world, it's really about that data flow mm. and almost powering that, those analytics. You've got to be thinking about where does the data come from and how does it arrive at the analytics? The other thing is, is if you figure out how that data flows, you really usually can identify where somebody's business pain is, right? Mm. You know, if the data's stuck somewhere, there's yeah. usually a business mm -hmm. pain and that's been really helpful. You have this concept of the streamlined data refinery. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit, and is that kind of building on what you just mentioned, kind of having, having to understand where the data is coming from in order to bring it through to the other side to the analytics? Exactly. So about two or three years ago, we really started to look at what are the patterns that are emerging with our own customers, and one that we saw over and over and over again was this concept of customers who had data in Hadoop, but then really needed a way to streamline it and provide slices of data to individual you know, consumers. And the streamlined data refinery that we announced back in um, 
October 5.2. This is really building on that. Mm -hmm. And what it allows the customer to do is to follow that process of data ingestion into Hadoop. And then once you've got that data there, really bring that into a, a high performance analytic database. So you think about a refinery, right? Just like a, any kind yeah. of refinery, oil refinery. And then once it's staged there, to be able to deliver it to, um, to end users. And we put, there's some, some really nice capabilities in our front end tools mm -hmm. around auto modeling and auto publishing so that that process of bringing the data and the analytics together and the IT and the business we automate a lot of that, so it really simplifies that mm -hmm. process. So data factories is a great term that we remember uh, we met in the first mm -hmm. uh, Hadoop uh, world we, we did four, five, five years ago now. It's huge. So will there be more factories per customer? Is a factory, refinery co concept the same thing? So is it one monolithic factory? Is it slicing and dicing? Can I create multiples? Yeah, well that's the nice thing about how this refinery is built out. Because we've connected really our um, analytic capabilities on the front end with the ingestion and the blending, it becomes a single delivery to whoever needs it. So we don't have to have a giant monolithic uh, factory in the middle. It's almost like refining to smaller factories, if you will, to different yeah. constituents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so talk a little bit about the market. I mean, we saw yesterday the big announcement was around the open data platform. We saw Hortonworks and Pivotal were kind of kind of getting a little tight there. And of course, you've got Cloudera and you've got Amazon. I mean, there's a, it's the interesting market is playing out right now, um, and a company like Pentaho, where you kind of play kind of above that layer, right? So mm -hmm. you're, you're helping doing some of that ingestion, some of that refining, and then the analytics. How do you look at this market? How does that? How do you approach things like partnerships, things like um, you know tightly integrating with the Hadoop vendors, whether mm -hmm. it's Cloudera, Hortonworks. I know you recently also have a, a par partnership relationship with AWS for Redshift. How do you kind of look at? that layer kind of just beneath what, what Pentaho does, and how are you navigating that with all these kind of uh, quickly developing alliances? Yeah, well that's a really good question, and if you think about um, a lot of the announcements, we're really looking at open, right? So mm -hmm. we've come out of open source, that's we lived for a long time, and it served us well at the beginning with big data because we were able to, we have something called the adaptive big data layer that's been able to allow us to support natively many different Hadoop distributions, NoSQL data stores like MongoDB, very easily. Um, there's a, um, if, if you're a customer and today it's you know, Hortonworks, tomorrow it's Cloudera, we're not, that's going to be a simple process for you because we've got this interface there that mm -hmm. makes that simple. So that was really the approach and I would say in general that with all the disruption in the market, that's, that's really our goal is to give customers choice and this open pluggable platform that we have mm -hmm. really supports that. I mean, we don't see very environment, very many environments that don't include a little bit of cloud, a little bit of you know, Hadoop, maybe there's some NoSQL, maybe there's an analytic database. So our approach is to leave that open so we can support mm -hmm. that environment. So the idea is you build, you know, an application using Pentaho, you can move that to other environments fairly easily and, and not, you know, avoid the dreaded vendor lock-in yeah. that we've, you know, we heard about in kind of the old traditional data management world. Exactly, and we found that um, being able to walk in and not disrupt the infrastructure that's mm. there has been really important and, and having an open platform allows us to do that. So if you've got an enterprise data warehouse running and that's running right your business, we certainly are never going to say, you know, take all that data and put it somewhere else. Yeah. That's working sure, really well for you. Stack, they're okay. They can deal yeah. with that. You put open source coming in with open source, that's a big deal. And if you're, blend, and then let's say then you want to blend data, right? Well, you need to be able to deal with legacy systems that have yeah. very valuable data in them. And if you've got data coming into Hadoop that maybe is unstructured, maybe it's machine generated data, that's really the beauty of it is to be yeah. able to blend those mm -hmm. together. And has the integration gotten better? Sorry, Jeff, I mean, the integration has come up. He brings up the integration piece. Mm -hmm. That is a big concern. Is it getting better and better? What are the key drivers for the integration piece? Because that's what you're addressing here is okay, I got my legacy, I got a big investment. I can just me through that slowly over time, move to something more modern. But I have new apps and you have new, new requirements. I'm going to yeah. deploy something fresh. What's the integration challenge? Have you, can you comment on that and, and, and kind of yeah, unpack that a little bit? Yeah, I, I think number one, the tools have gotten better. Our tools are definitely um, in a place where for big data, we've simplified a lot of that. I mean, it's, a, it's much more graphical, um, you know, GUI based. You're not, if, if somebody doesn't have the resources to learn MapReduce, not a problem. Mm -hmm. They can use Pentaho, we really simplify that. Take a lot of time out for many of our customers. Um, so that part of it's gotten a lot easier. And then if you think about um, what we've done with the Streamline Data Refinery, we've basically put um, an interface in front of the user where they're able to request and, and, and kind of 
choose specific pieces of an analytic data, a data set that they're interested in, but they're shielded from that really complex transformation behind it. So I think the two things that have gone better, one is on the developer side, the tools are better. They're, we've actually you know, optimized our for, ours for big data sources, which is really a whole other world of, of data sources to deal with. And then on the front end for us, closing that loop between the IT and the business with something like a streamlined data refinery, where the user actually has the ability to run it's kicking off an ETL transformation, but they don't know it because they're behind a nice user interface that they're just kind of choosing what, you know, if it's a financial services analyst, right, they're maybe saying, I, I need to look at this stock symbol, and I, you know, NASDAQ actually was one of our customers we mentioned today. If I'm looking at a certain stock symbol and I need to look at a certain date period of time, I'm changing that up, kicking that off through an interface, transformation behind it could be really complex. It could have Hadoop in it, it could have an enterprise data warehouse. Simple, right? It just buys all that. And I think that's really where we're seeing things going is that closing that gap between. Abstracting away that complexity, John, so that you know, giving the business user more power to, exactly. to get, get, the, get done what they need to get done without having to go to, to, go to IT or data warehouse administrator and say, hey, build me this report, model this data, deliver this answer to this question kind of thing. Yeah, and in many cases, that just doesn't really work anymore, right? Well, there's, the time is, yeah, you, you by the time you get the answer and the, the, how fast business moves today, it's just not, not plausible, yeah. really. It, yeah. So talk a little bit about open source in general. So, I mean, you know, a few years ago, the idea of kind of open source software in the enterprise was, you know, a little, little scary for a lot of enterprises, mm -hmm. where now it's just becoming, this is the way business is done. Yeah. Um, that's where the innovation is, is happening, that's where you're seeing ecosystems being built. Uh, how have you viewed that, that transition? Have you seen a dramatic change in the way enterprises view open source software? Yeah, well, it's interesting because coming out of being an open source BI company, right, we, we for mm -hmm. a long time had to overcome that, right. you know, and when we got into the big data world, it was really, um, you know, having to prove ourselves out, and, and we have. Um, now it's often a requirement, right? We, we, we have a requirement for open source. That we get called in, which is great. I mean, I think the biggest thing for us in terms of open in this kind of a market is just the ability to innovate. And so when things, you know, you mentioned Spark, right, and a year and a half ago it was Storm and we've done a lot of things with Yarn. When those types of technologies emerge, it really allows us to have our community out there banging on things, trying things out, creating plugins. We see what's viable, but we have to have a, you know, uh, closed proprietary engineering organization that's massive in order to test out those technologies. So I wanted to ask you about the um, comment we heard earlier in the Cube about Hadoop's now a boardroom conversation. So, um, which they're saying, you know, so I'm like, come on, yeah. <laughs> show me yeah. one board room, <laughs> Hadoop. And they said, yeah, in, in private equity-based companies, the, the modern stuff that's all born in the cloud, certainly Hadoop's a known word. Mm -hmm. But big data certainly is a boardroom conversation. Yes. What have you seen out there in terms of those kinds of conversations? And what are they like? I mean, are they specific to the geekiness of it? Is it more higher level macro? Or what, what have you found? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we, you know, if we think about, um, I mentioned the blueprints that we've, you know, identified a couple years ago. And what we really found was it was a different conversation with customers because we would go in and talk about what we had seen and really ask them, what are you trying, you know, where is this pain? Because there's some pain that's going on, right? I mean, you think about NASDAQ, it's like yeah. 10 billion rows of data a day. That, that's, that's a problem, right? We've got to figure out how to manage that. Um, and that affects, affects well, and part also, of your business, you know, right? NASDAQ, real time, I mean, one little yeah. Problem if they miss a minute. Exactly, you know, and, and you know compliance and regulation yeah. and all of these things, right? Um, and so that's really the conversation because we, you know, we do end up having pretty technical conversations. Oftentimes, we'll be with a CTO when we've put out these blueprints that really say, well, so we, this is what we're seeing: an enterprise data yeah. warehouse. You might have a dupe, you might have NoSQL. There's like this light bulb that goes off, and they're like, that's exactly it. That's exactly what we have. That that's our problem. We've got this in uh, an enterprise data warehouse, but we know we need these other data sources that are coming in that are new. We've got to make this all work together, and that's that's the conversation. So if I can then. connect the dots then, hmm, if I had like a storage converged infrastructure platform that could move very fast towards trading day, getting faster time, you know, these kinds of things are what people are talking about. Exactly. Is that kind of the boardroom frame? Exactly, there's another uh, customer we have where it's really about, they'd have to have analysts spend, you know, you know, 30 days trying to get to data sets. They're looking for fraud, right? If with a streamlined data refiner, if we can say, you know what, we can take that time down to 
30 minutes because now you've got an interface in front yeah. of your analyst. Mm -hmm. They don't need to know about ETL transformations, nor yeah. do you want to spend. That, yeah, but if the they covers, can yeah. do that, and then guess what? When somebody comes in and says, now you've got to recreate that, you know, because of some regulation, yeah. they can go back and generate that data set. That's, that's huge, right? That's, yeah. that's transformative. I mean, I think that's the cool thing about where we are is it's transformative. The, uh, the other thing I want to ask you is kind of more of a personal question around the industry. We, you know, we're, we were talking earlier about the Unix generation and, and <laughs> yes. you know, Mike Olson wrote a blog post about the whole open data platform mm -hmm. and you know, we've lived through and, and knowing your background, you know, being in the business, going back in the 80s, that was the systems business. You went to yeah. Berkeley, um, you know, where you know, it all started really pretty much and we all coded in those system days. But what's different now? I mean, back then it was pretty obvious. Sun, a, IBM, HP had the big Unix systems, yeah. right? But is it different now? I mean, so it's hard to, I mean, I'm just having a hard time personally making that leap of faith saying the Unix comparison's the same. So I'm just, I just don't see it the same way. It's a different landscape back then. Now it's more open. You got the cloud, you have things like Amazon. It's not an apples to apples anymore. So, so is it possible for these new things to happen? And, and can you make that Unix comparison uh, now today. Yeah, I mean, that was interesting. I was just looking, reading up a little bit about that before we started, and I think there is a comparison, right, because it was a challenge, right? Organizations are like, we can't deal with this, right? Vendors aren't, can't sell anything yeah. because customers are like, well, which one do I pick? Which flavor? Tomorrow it's another one. Um, so that part of it, to me, I think is similar, that there does have to be some sort of standards that start to emerge. However, I do think that um, if you really look at it, it's different because we're connecting people and things, and data doesn't sit in one place anymore, right? So you start thinking about, you know, everything that's coming out of your phone and, yeah. you know, cars that have sensors in them. It's, it's, it's a bigger challenge because this data is so different and large, and we've, we're working off a paradigm of storing it and then analyzing it. So the question is, that's not really, you know, is that really where we're going to be in five or ten years? So I think it's different in that sense, is that we're not really solving yeah. a it's problem not, there's that no there's one technology that's going to fix vendor, it. Right? Or vendor, set of vendors. There's exactly. no win, real winner in the data exactly. world. Data's everywhere, right? So yeah. I mean, that, that's where one, one thing that we do see is the embedding, you know, on our side, is yeah. having that embedded ability mm -hmm. is huge because if you start thinking about the apps and where things are processed. Embedded data or embedded? Embedded analytics. Embedded yeah. analytics is, Like in know. memory or in the processor in yeah. the silicon? Well, for instance, you can embed Pentaho, right? You know, you can have put We'll bring you right into the application. Yeah, into the application. People do their work every day. Exactly. Whereas, you know, back when I was covering the BI space, very specifically back in my old days uh, as a journalist, you know, what I kept hearing was, we don't want to bring we don't, as a user, I don't want to go to, I have to go to a new application no, it's annoying. out of where, <laughs> my, where I do most of my work. Bring yeah. the analytics into the application. Now, so the BI space has been trying to do that for quite a long time. Um, where Pentaho has an advantage there is with the open, open nature of your platform yeah. to integrate that into applications. Yeah, and almost every, I mean, the, the streamlined data refinery, you know, we talked about NASDAQ, those are all embedding on the front end. Mm -hmm. So how they're pushing those analytics out is Pentaho, but generally they're embedded in, in some other application because that's just as, you know, to your point, we don't want to have to go to another tool, right? And a lot of times it's not, um, you know, we were talking yesterday about um, Halliburton, who's one of our customers, and they have Pentaho embedded in like 12 different applications. One of them goes out to, you know, guys sitting on an oil rig. Well, they're not going to bring up a BI tool, right? <laughs> they need to have their dashboard and yeah. see their data mm -hmm. every day. So, but I think that's becoming more and more important because of that, you know, sort of point of impact. Where do I have to make that decision, that business decision, Yeah, right? Yeah. It's different. And it's about moving in beyond just, you know, here's um, you know, the analytics embedded in the application, but the the recommendation embedded in the application, or you know, exactly. what should I do next? I don't, I don't even want to take the time as a frontline worker. I don't want to necessarily look at a pretty visual. I just, what, sh what do I need to do next to move, to do my job? Exactly. Um, you know, while still giving them some level of autonomy to you know question that and dig into that if they want to. Mm -hmm. So, some interesting stuff. So, my last question would be around the market and how you see this evolving. So, we talked a little bit earlier, briefly about the pending acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we've seen ac the acquisition pace pick up in this space. We've seen you know Jasper's office, another company that was acquired, that often gets mentioned with Pentaho. Both have open source BI roots. Yeah. Um, we saw Revolution Analytics get acquired by Microsoft. So we're starting to see some acquisitions happening. Um, and so you'll, you'll probably be down on the floor at Hadoop World uh, later today or tomorrow, and there's going to be a lot of, lot of startups out there, a lot yeah. of different companies. Um, you know, generally how markets work, they're not all going to make it. Some are going to have great exits, some are not. Yeah. How do you see this evolving? Do you think we're on a, 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 the, the verge of kind of a significant wave of consolidation? Do you think that's good for the market? 
I think that the I mean it's BI specifically, and you know you can extend that to what's happening with big data. It's just it's 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 in disruption, right? So there's always going to be vendors who make it, vendors who don't, and there's going to be some consolidation, et cetera. Uh, I think that essentially those that and probably why you're seeing some of the open companies, you know, being acquired is because that's really where things are yeah. going, right? I mean, I think that's the value is is that ability to be open, and if you're going to be part of any kind of you know established infrastructure, new infrastructure, platform, whatever, having, having open technology is just mm. going to make it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you, what do you think about like some of the other approaches? I see Oracle has been very successful lately. I see that's where Sun went to. Um, Cloudera has a relationship with Oracle as well as Intel. So they're straddling the lines between big companies and also uh, open source communities. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm talking about micro blog posts. So this balance between the incumbents who aren't necessarily in a strong position other than their market position with customers and the upstarts. So how do you how do you view that having that having that perspective of coming from through the multiple cycles of innovation we've been through I mean it's a, it's kind of a new era. How do you look at that and how would you share with someone coming into the industry say hey back in the day we used to walk with bare feet through the snow <laughs> you know I mean I mean it's we almost form extension you know, marks yeah, <laughs> we had Ingress data I was like you know you know command line so again yeah. this is a new generation yeah. coming in and some some amazing things happening open source has certainly changed it but yeah. is there going to be that kind of I mean our, our oracles red stack but like they're doing well I mean the earnings are awesome I mean yeah. I just saw John Fowler he's like kicking butt over there it's at the inside Oracle with their engineered system so interesting approach do customers care if yeah. the performance is there so yeah I, th I, I mean I think customers have to care right they're running a lot of their business on those technologies <laughs> let's be honest I mean, you know when yeah. I was talking about you know the sort of the established vendors and when we looked at what was happening with these blueprints yeah. go back to that it it you can't you can't mm -hmm. assume that any of that's going to go away right it's what's yeah. running the world's business today or those established <laughs> infrastructure infrastructures of data warehouses and and yeah. now we're in this era of something needs to change because the data has changed the volumes have changed the speed of business has changed and there'll be new technologies that emerge but i think it, our approach really is pentaho is that and again you know that's the beauty of being open is those will just be complementary for a long time right until because those those systems that companies have invested you know millions of dollars in have to keep running their business for some period of time so. and still be available for this new category of software models where open source exactly. needs to fit in exactly. in some sort of Lego block or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, I think the plug and play idea, you know, extensibility is what's really going to be important as we move forward in this space for sure. Donna, well, thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it. What do you expect for the week this week? Just to share with us quickly, you know, what do you expect to unfold this week at, at, at the Hadoop World? Um, what do you expect to see? Any fireworks, mellow? You know, yeah, I know. think it's going to be exciting. I think there's going to be a lot of conversations like the ones we just had. I think we're going to talk a lot about open source this week, probably more than we have in many years. Um, and we're excited. You know, we have a new product coming out. We just had an acquisition. So Great. lots of good, exciting conversations. You got a spring sure. in your step. You guys are looking good. Congratulations yeah, on all the thank success. You. Donna, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back. <laughs>